intimacy with him. The fire cannot be extinguished. The fire cannot be extinguished. And just as Jesus healed when he was on earth and has healed all the time since he left to this day, he will continue to heal. And I say to you, if you walk with the Spirit, hear what the Holy Spirit says. I will do wonders that have not been done in all the earth. It will be an awesome thing that God will do with you. That God will do with you. I want to tell you, the God that is upon your life is a God for whom the impossible does not exist. There is nothing impossible for God. There is nothing impossible for God. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. At the cross on the Calvary, Jesus did not only die for our sins, but he did it also to heal us from all our pains. By his stripes we are healed. Today I want to tell you that your sickness may even be embarrassing. I don't know. Only Jesus knows, but he is here to cleanse you. He is here to heal you. He is here to bring total restoration to your life, deliverance, healing, whatever you need. Jesus is in this place. Amen. He had been suffering from an autoimmune disease. She had eosinophilic gastritis. She had 20 to 22 eosinophils throughout his body. In a previous biopsy that had been done in 2021, he had several treatments, but in the end, no treatment resolved her symptomatology. I could not eat. My food got stuck. I felt a lot of burning in my chest, and for a long time I had this sensation that I was going to die. On Good Friday, I took the word given by the pastor. Someone has the esophagus very irritated. Very irritated. Ulcers, and I think they already did an endoscopy and found the esophagus is terrible. Ulcers, and the pain in the pit of the stomach like stabbings. You are receiving healing now. I felt warmth in my chest. I felt free. I went to the doctor as recommended. A new endoscopy was performed, where the parathematous lesions I had in the ulcers I had in the gastrointestinal tract are totally resolved. And in the biopsy there are no eosinophils. And this disease is extremely rare. And it resolves naturally, because it is an autoimmune disease. Amen! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! On Wednesday, at Nights with Jesus, the pastor said that we didn't need to fight with God, because God was God. So he reconciled with the Lord, God did not delay to answer him and and many people applied for the promotion, among them his boss. And in the last promotion, he tripled my salary. He gave me a corporate car. Hallelujah! After a surgery I had, I suffered from a hypoacusis. She had a very severe loss of hearing acuity. She is a soloist in our orchestra, in our choir. And apart from everything else, she is a soprano. And for her, her ear is, that's her instrument, her ears and her throat. So she was very distressed. Because of her work, so that was going to limit her a lot. It is not normal that she recovers from one moment to another without any kind of intervention. Here you have the two exams where you can verify and where you can see where the ear is affected and where she has a new examination. And she is totally normal. I went to have the second exam, and the doctor told me, this is like a miracle, and she stopped. I told her, a miracle. Yes, because it is very difficult to recover so fast, and so soon the level of hearing that I have right now. Hallelujah! Marcelida, thank the Lord for your life. You are a wonderful instrument in the hands of God. The enemy wanted to get you out of this place. But the Lord has healed you, and for many and many years, we will have Marcella here with us, with the Lord's help. God bless you, Marcelita. If you wish to know more about Jesus, to know what he has done for you and what he could do for your life, then pay great attention to the following words. The word of the Lord says in the New International Version, 
John chapter 5. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. When you have the Son of God, you have the certainty of being able to say that you have passed from death to life only by the fact that He is with you. He is with you. He is just waiting for you to make a decision. I think it is clear what I am telling you. And I just want to pray in this hour for those who say, I want to hold on to that love. If you are ready, I want to give you in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I have been a sinner. I have turned away from you. But today, I recognize that I need you. And I draw near to you, my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to enter into my heart, to wash away my sins with your precious blood, and make me a new creation in God. May old things pass away and all things be made new. Write my name in the book of eternal life. And please never blot it out. Help me to be faithful to you and to your word for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give a big hand to my Jesus. You will now hear a mighty word that will edify your life and give your soul the conviction that God will always fight for you. Don't be distracted because this word can change your life forever. With you, Pastor Ricardo Rodriguez. First book of Kings, chapter 18 and verse 30. Then... Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Repeat after me, the altar was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes, the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom he gave the word, he said, your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two shells of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said, Fill four large jars of water and pour it down on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said. And they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice the wood, the stones on the soil, and also lick up the water in the trench. When the people saw it, they fell down and said, Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God. Hallelujah. This moment in history is a source of pride for the people of God. Elijah confront the false prophets, the gods, 
and more than the prophets, the gods of the nations. And Elijah, the only prophet of Jehovah, and God showed there that he is God. He is our God. This is the story of Israel. The nation which had been united in the conquest during the time of the judges and the first three kings. When Solomon's son comes up, the kingdom is divided into the southern kingdom where are the Jews and the northern kingdom which is called Israel. Israel, the, the southern kingdom, was in the hands of the sons and descendants of David, as God had promised. But the northern kingdom was in the hands of Jeroboam. He soon led the people astray by making cults and high places to worship, and they began to forget God. A king after king after king. And the king in the days of Elijah was King Ahab, who reigned 22 years over the nation. But this man was the most wicked. He did more evil things than the rest of the kings. It was a light thing for him to worship Baalim, to marry the daughter of the king of the Sphistas, that was not only an enemy nation, but it was a idolatrous nation. It was a pagan nation. So God sent Elijah the Tishbite from Gilgad, and he appears before the king, and he says, King, there will be no rain, no dew on the earth except by my word. And he was gone. And the heavens shut up and there was no rain. Three years and a half after God spoke to Elijah and said, Go and report to Ahab, or I'm going to send rain on Israel. God doesn't stay in a permanent punishment. God disciplines his people that he loves and pities them and he wants his people to turn to God with all their heart that he may bless them. So Elijah came to Ahab and when Ahab sees him said, you are the one that travels Israel. And he replied, no, you and your father's house worship in Baal. Gather the prophets of Baal and the whole nation to the Mount Carmel. And the king did so. And on the top 450 prophets of Baal, Elijah was the only prophet of God. And Elijah says, let us make a sacrifice. You take an ox, break it in pieces, lay the wood, and I will do the same. And the God who answers by fire, let he be God. We are not going to put fire. Let God put the fire the true God. And the people said, yes, let it be. So, so Elijah had already confronted them and there was no clarity. How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is, follow him. But the people did not respond. They were so living it that they did not understand. Then the prophets of Baal prepared the sacrifice, and it was an spectacle. It was an abominable circus. 450 men shouting with all their might, calling on Baal to send fire, dancing. It was so frantic, and says the Bible, since their God did not answer, Elijah mocked them. He said, shout louder, perhaps he's asleep. Then they were cutting each other with knives and wounded each other on the blood flowed. And they were waiting for Baal to answer and there was no answer. It was Elijah's turn now. Elijah, he calls all Israel, come near. And they approached the whole nation. 
And he restores the altar of the Lord which was destroyed. It was abandoned. And he lays the twelve stones. And he makes the altar and a great trench around it. Then he lays the wood and the wood. And he asks for water. There were to bring six pictures of water and they were wet in the wood and put it on the sacrifice and he makes a prayer. I like Elijah's prayer because he says, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Let it be known this day that you are God and Israel. And I, you are the God on, of, of Israel. Answer to me, O oh Lord. You are the God of Israel. I don't know if you understand, but they were saying, Baal is the God of Israel. And Elijah said, Lord, Lord, you answer and show them Prove to them that you are the God of Israel and come down with fire. Consume the burning offering, consumes the wood, consumes the stones, consumes the dust, consumes the water. Hallelujah. And the nation. <laughs> That's why I said I wanted to be there. Two million people prostrated, broken, saying, Jehovah is the God. Jehovah is God. Hallelujah. And when this happened, they turned back and prostrated themselves and confessed that Jehovah, Jehovah is God and God sent the rain. God sent the rain. And I'm telling you, a oh, great rain is here. Hallelujah. Elijah says in his prayer, I was sent by God to do these things. What things? First, to call the country to turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. If the Lord is God, follow Him. It is the first thing you need to do. Why? The Theronomy 28 is the chapter of the promises to the one who hears its word, his word, and keeps that. The Lord says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall be you in the city. Blessed shall be you in the country. Blessed be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and increase your herds, increase your cattle, And the offspring, your basket will be blessed. Your kneeling bowl. And you will be blessed when you come out and when you come in. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out one way and flee on seven ways. The Lord will command his blessing on your storehouses. In everything that you say in your hand, he will bless you in the land which he promised, he promised you. But when they disobeyed, then the curses begin. Curse is your needing through. Curse thou be in the city and curse shall be in the field. Curse are your herds, your flocks, your going out and your coming in. He will send destruction upon you, astonishment, and everything that you place your hand until you will be destroyed and perish. That's that chapter. But there is a chapter that I like very much. For me, it represents the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy 30. 
There is an opportunity. Now it shall happen when all these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse, and you will be in the midst of the nations. If you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice, then the Lord will bring back your captives. He will have mercy on you. He will gather you among all the peoples to whom he has scattered you. Thou shalt hear the voice of the Lord again, and he will put all those curses on your enemies. And the Lord your God shall make thee abound in all the works of your hands, the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of the land of God. For the Lord will rejoice over thee for good as he did with his fathers. The blessing will return when there is drought, when there is storming, when there is famine. If you turn to him, he will send his blessing upon all your ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second thing the prophet did was to restore the altar. Imagine the nation has no altar. No one is seeking God. There is no place to go worship. To me, that is the greatest strategy in the pandemic for believers. A nation that has no altar open for God is destined for ruin, for judgment. For judgment. There is no protection. But if the altars are open, God will protect the country. We need to open the altars. And third, he restored the offering. They put a calf to offer to the Lord. The offering was water. There was no water. And they sacrificed four pitchers filled of water. A million or two million people watching. Some of them bringing out their pitchers because Elijah asked. And that water was jumping between the pitcher and them with their throats dry. Seeing how they poured the water. They spoiled that water according to them. On that offering, on that calf. One and another and another and another. It seems like in exaggeration. And he says, do it again. Do it again, again. Imagine bringing pitchers of water to the mountain. One, two, three, and four, again. The altar had to be restored. The offering had to be restored. The most valuable had to be for the God of heaven. And then is Elijah making that prayer. Prove to me, prove to them that you are God in Israel. And the fire comes down from heaven. Hallelujah. And God sends his rain. Oh, great rain. Hallelujah. My question to you is, if there is no blessing, if the heavens are closed for you, Turn back to him. Follow him. You will have that light of glory. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of fire, a light of life. Hallelujah. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger again. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Second, restore that search for God, the altar, the congregating, but also your altar, your place to seek Him. Seek me and you will live. That is life. It is a revival. Seek me and you will live. And third, restore the offering. That is the teaching of Malachi. Restore the offering. I'm telling you, if you do it, a rain. A great rain is heard. Hallelujah. Let us turn to the Lord with all our heart. And let us say to him, Lord, shepherd me. Show me the way. Show me the path, Lord. I want to follow you, but I also want to adore you as you deserve it, with depth, day by day. I want you to be with me in the secret place. I want to have that close communion with you. I need you, Jesus, and learn to stay there with him. Don't be light. Don't be quick to turn away. God has much to say to you. God has much to speak to you. Abide in his presence. And restore also the altar. Restore the offerings. And you'll be able to say to the Lord, Lord, make yourself worthy of me. My offerings are before your altar. My seeds that I have sown are before you, Lord. Let that rain come upon my life. Let there be no lack in my house, neither spiritual nor physical. Let there be no economic scarcity. I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God will do with you. That God will do with you. I want to tell you, the God that is upon your life is a God for whom the impossible does not exist. There is nothing impossible for God. There is nothing impossible for God. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts.